This program is brought exclusively to you by CIMB. Drop me more food or drop more bombs. Either kill me or feed me. I cannot stand the hunger anymore. This was an Afghan voice unposted letter to US President George Bush. For the child and many more like him, the scar of war has made each day a grueling test. Yet, not all is lost as volunteers from far away like Malaysia extend their help just so victims like this young Afghan boy can live another day. This kid who haven't had a toy in his life, that thing means so much to him. So you realize a toy from a boy in Malaysia who travels to a boy in Afghanistan. You see that the impact. Every time I talk about children, I do cry. I'm not ashamed to cry. Why are people hurting children? Inshallah, it's ikhlas. It's just you know we don't expect all those things. It's just uh, the working, uh, working together with the other people, with uh, the other volunteers. So that that is good enough. We don't we, we don't look for all those things. But uh, you know, uh, it's the company, it's the the work, so our contribution. Most people might find it unthinkable, leaving the comfort and security of their home in return for weeks of grueling mental and physical challenge in places where medical and humanitarian aid is by and large out of reach. Yet, to most Mercy volunteers, missions are often demanding, forcing them to work under extreme conditions caused by the act of God or man. For some 200 volunteers, working on the ground can be a heart-wrenching experience at times, but most often, it's an invaluable experience. And we had started with a very, very humble uh, two containers that we converted into clinics in the middle of the desert. In walks a woman, uh, very dishevelled, dirty, complaining of stomach pains. Um, and being the typical doctor, we are looking for a cause. And here we are going through a translator, pointing to where her stomach hurts. And she looks at us as though we are really not very clever doctors. And then she puts her hand into her pocket, takes out a fistful of stones and says to the translator, just tell the doctor to take away my pain. This is all I've been eating for the past four days. Uh, typically when we go out to these villages, we will sound the siren and there's an, a local announcement by our, our interpreter. And you will see the kids running up and, you know, having fun with us, uh, shaking hands and this and that. And the, notably there was this boy who didn't want to shake his hand, but instead, you know, held his left hand, which was, you know, not, not, not uh, accustomed. Uh, only to realize that you know there was a big uh, abscess or you know a pus filled injur injured wound uh, on his hand uh, so I was left with no choice uh, apart from having to do a little operation and that was you know you can imagine under a tree without uh, much facilities so it was down to bush medicine Inspired by the plight of innocent Kosovo suffering the effects of war in 1999 Mercy Malaysia's prime objective then was only to provide medical relief Yet, as time passed, they soon realized having a medical team alone would not suffice. They soon found themselves recruiting volunteers from other professions. We have two arms of relief, the medical and non-medical. We then select our uh, volunteers based on what we need. For example, in the acute phase of an emergency, we may require more medical personnel to go in. Uh, the recce team always goes ahead to uh, do a needs analysis. And then recommend to us uh, what are the needs actually that are required. A lot of social deprivation. Uh, the thing that really strikes you is actually the hopelessness of the people who are there. Uh, when we run a clinic uh, every morning, you know, you see about a hundred people there sitting there. There's no hope. There's no future. They can't see a future at all. All they can see is that they are existing day to day. You look at the children, for example, and you can see, you know, where they are, uh, 
they are mired in poverty and in dirt. And a lot of them have not been washed for weeks, I could say. And you can see that this situation is not going to change for a long time unless you know, somebody comes in and helps them out of it. You can see sometimes their, their, their eyes just wells up with tears, you know. Because you're there and then you're holding them. And that is like, everyone can do that. It doesn't take a, a surgeon or a doctor or anybody, but everyone can do that. You just hold on to them, smile at them. If we, I speak in my language and they will reply in their own. Somehow the communication gets across that I'm here there to help. Hot and uncomfortable, this warehouse is where volunteers do their part in helping sort out public contribution to the underprivileged, whether at home or abroad. Here, hundreds of tons of clothes, food, toys and other donated items wait to be packed. Since its inception, some 12,000 tons of items have been successfully shipped to various locations, including Pakistan, Turkey and Afghanistan. The children are the happiest of all. They get clothes, they get food, they get all washed up and cleaned up with clothes. And uh, from the photos that is uh, uh, taken, uh, that, that is what makes us happy down here. <laughs> After doing all the work and we see that is the clothes have been sent there and it's been used down there. Uh, so that is, uh, that, is, that is enough for us. <laughs> what this has done for us really is to develop a volunteer base that is very, very interesting. Uh, we have volunteers ranging from young children, students. Um, during the uh, end of the year school holidays last year, we managed to get parents to send their problem children to us. You know, children who would otherwise be, you know, having this lepak culture um, or not doing anything useful at home. Uh, they were sent over to us to do packing and this whole storage area used to be filled with at least hundreds of volunteers every day. Uh, no, I don't think money, I mean, having fun with my friends or money is that important as, as like, to help, you see? It, it you can look at me too. It, it, it gives you satisfaction, see? Yeah. Countries frayed by war or forces of nature, the sight of friendly faces coming from faraway lands, volunteering their expertise is undoubtedly a touching experience. It is moments like this when by just being there can bring hope to someone's life and make the journey ahead look less bleak than it really is. During in, in the Kosovo mission is that uh, the children, you know, the children is something that actually the biggest casualties of any crisis they will have to live through the experience of their families being killed or being uh, wounded in the crisis yeah so that, that's why when we were with them you know we will have to actually uh, do more beyond just medical so what i did for example was you know uh, to play with them you know uh, to teach them some songs, yeah, some verses from the Quran, so that they will feel that you know life will have to go on. Apart from the immediate benefit of giving medical aid, Mercy Malaysia believes it has much more to offer. The same, teach me to fish so that I can fish for life, is not far from what Mercy aspires to achieve. That's where the devotion and sacrifice from its non-medical volunteers have made a significant impact from vocational training to carpentry to teaching them the basics of drilling a well. These are just some of the empowering skills taught by professionals like architects, lecturers and engineers whose only wish is that their knowledge will help victims create a better future. And Mercy, what MC have done is uh, there are long-term plans as well. We're not just going to help them in terms of medical. Uh, we are going to help families to build themselves up with some basic skill and then uh, try to help them go back to their own village to, 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 to stay rather than staying in refugee camps. So Mercy juga uh, cuba mengadakan program-program seperti uh, Mercy Vocational Training Centre yang mana apa yang kami cuba buat yang ini mengadakan satu pusat latihan yang ini kami cuba mengembalikan pelarian-pelarian ke kampung asal 
Tapi dalam proses mengembalikan mereka ke kampung asal Kami cuba menempatkan mereka ke satu tempat Yang kami cuba memberikan uh, pendidikan dan tunjuk ajar Dari segi pertukangan Dari segi ke- kemahiran pertukangan dan juga kemahiran kepertanian Dan untuk untuk uh, kau, dan untuk dan anak-anak mereka Kami cuba mengadakan uh, program pendidikan uh, So di samping itu juga apa yang mesti cuba buat Ialah kami cuba mengadakan program uh, Projek Perigi lah Yang mana kita cuba dapatkan bantuan daripada Malaysia Untuk membantu Macam menderma aa, Menderma pada satu kampung Tapi lebih kepada program Perigi I realised that you know the Suffering that the Afghan people Are having is actually More than what Is being portrayed on the On the media yeah? For example the lack of uh, Education That they have Ya yeah? actually come out with a lot of uh, what it called it a situation and so people will actually argue on small things when they can actually focus on big things yeah so so in afghanistan is uh, to me is uh, what it called it a very good example whereby you know the lack of education will breed a lot of other problems criticize and link Mercy Malaysia with high-profiled missions to Kosovo or Afghanistan, but that does not mean it has overlooked the plight of fellow Malaysians. Through its local outreach programs, Mercy also extends the same kind of expertise and commitment to remote communities who live in far-flung areas of Sabah and Sarawak. Plagued by poverty or simply the lack of access, Mercy has addressed the issues of why essential assistance has been difficult and sometimes impossible. Mercy Malaysia has also done uh, missions here. We have gone right down to the kampongs. We have had missions in Sabah and Sarawak, uh, you know, in areas which have uh, had problems with floods. We have gone in to help them. So really, we are not just uh, outside Malaysia, but we also have a presence in Malaysia, which... I believe we will be developing more and more. In fact, what we are hoping is actually to set up uh, chapters of mercy, not just in Kuala Lumpur, but in Sabah and Sarawak and, and, and in other states, so that uh, we can be, our service can go right down to our Malaysians, rather not just overseas, but actually to people in Malaysia who uh, also require our services. Malaysians pride themselves for being generous people, yet it was only recently that Malaysians from all walks of life, race, age and profession were given this unique platform to do more acts of humanity. Today, the spirit of Kotong Royong may be scarce, but it is far from gone, for it continues to live through the compassion, dedication and aspirations for a better world found in many of Mercy Malaysia's volunteers. I'm saying that uh, why should we only look to the West uh, as being examples of humanitarian workers? You, you switch on the television, you don't see Asian faces. Uh, why aren't we uh, the natural uh, sort of um, voluntary workers? Look at the Malaysian uh, family system and so forth. This spirit of volunteerism in the villages, it's, it's been there for generations, but it hasn't been expressed. Uh, on the field as far as the medical relief is concerned. At least to me personally, and I, I believe the, the same is shared uh, with a lot of my other friends, uh, that there's some degree of like price to pay. Um, there's risks attached to it. Um, we're, we're prepared to do this for the sake of helping others. Um, but I suppose it helps being a Muslim that you know, we're very clear that what we do um, is term as jihad. In other words, you know, you're striving very hard um, because jihad is not just going to you know, pick up arms and you know, fighting a war. Uh, but this is jihad in terms of our professional work, trying to help us. Worse come to us, whatever you know, um, eventuality that happens, this is inshallah, God willing, we will be accepted by God. For a first time volunteer, signing up for a mission can be a harrowing experience. 
focus only on doing their noble bit. The harsh reality of poor living conditions, threat of diseases and people dying at their feet were the turning point for many. And instead of turning back, many of them come back, relishing the experience and the new friends they have found. I think I remember this one particular instance where there was this little girl who had a burn contracture in her hand and we, you know, and uh, we operated on her and we managed to release two fingers, you know. And I think this is the first time in her life that, you know, somebody has actually done something for her. And she didn't have to come back to the hospital, but she came back every day to see us, you know. And I think that was really, really touching, you know, that to her, someone else cares for her. And she would come back every day and just sit outside our clinic uh, to smile at us, just to look at us, and just to be with us. Uh, when we went to the clinic in Springbodak, a mother brought a child who is uh, born without an anus for three days now, so it's blocked inside. So without surgery, I think this child will die because the, the intestine will burst. So we happened to be there at the time, at the right place. It's a shame how we often take things for granted, like fair weather, rich natural resources and the abundance of food supply. Water is a source of life. Too much or too little of it can spell disaster. But for Dr. Jamila, filling droplets of rain after a long dry spell was a moment of great joy. Perhaps seldom has something so simple as rain brought so much happiness and hope to so many. We've taken on the women's wing of Kandahar Hospital and uh, as soon as I stepped into the hospital uh, and I stepped out of the main door, um, it started to rain and it started to rain, not just a drizzle but a heavy rain, uh, not unlike a Malaysian rainstorm uh, which had not been seen in Kandahar for five years. I took it as a positive sign. People were dancing out on the streets and you know, trying to rub my shoulders saying that I had brought them good luck but uh, it wasn't that, it was, I think I take it as a positive sign that it is something good. And as I looked at them and I said, I will never take rain for granted again in my life. I think Malaysia is a paradise compared to a lot of other places. Uh, we should not be complaining so much. What you have, uh, what you're sitting and eating every day is what people are dreaming of overseas or know these places. So um, we are very, very lucky. Many quarters have recognized Mercy's goodwill effort. Yet to Mercy, the journey is far from over. It aspires to be the leading regional provider of medical relief and humanitarian services by the year 2005. But to Dr. Jamila, the definition of achievement is far from material recognition. Rather, it's the power to change things for the better. For us now to be able to sit on the same table with organizations like MSF and WHO and UNCHCR in Afghanistan is a great achievement. But I think the final definition of achievement for me personally will be when I can actually, uh, we can actually um, change people's mindset to just put a little bit of time or money or effort into just trying to make somebody's life a little bit better. Uh, whatever li little we and other people, by that I mean the other Malaysian NGOs um, is, and also governmental organizations have achieved, I think it is great and it is something that we should look forward to and expand. Um, because uh, earlier I had said that uh, we are very thankful that Malaysia is very comfortable. We've got most if not everything that we require. Um, we are advanced in many ways. It is just the right time that we ought to, you know, stretch out to lend our hands to help other people. Despite its humble intentions of just trying to do good, unwanted controversies have befallen the organisation. The negative extends to rumours and misconceptions from local and abroad, mostly accusing it as not being run and managed by fellow Malaysians. We've been accused of all sorts of things, all right? Now, Mercy Malaysia is purely Malaysian. Uh, it's thought of, conceived in Malaysia. I'm a gynecologist, so I'll speak this way. It's conceived in Malaysia, was born in Malaysia. It will be raised in Malaysia, and hopefully, if it ever dies, we hope not, it will die in Malaysia. The word Mercy Malaysia is just an acronym. It's a short form. We were thinking of 
how do we start the name of the society? So we said Malaysian Medical Relief Society. So when we started the society, we then realised about six months later that there were about 150 organisations with the word Mercy in it. There was Mercy Corps International, there was Mercy International, Mercy Ship, uh, oh my goodness, everything ranging from Muslim groups, uh, Christian groups, uh, all sorts of groups. And it, we have a tough time now trying to convince people that we have no parent organisation, that we are purely Malaysian. This program was brought exclusively to you by CIMB 